This morning I'm going to begin a series on TempDB is growing out of control. And I had a an individual developer recently reach out to me on LinkedIn and, and ask a few questions about it. And I realized in some of the questions that there were some misconceptions that they had either learned or they had heard or just didn't understand quite the the process of TempDB, just kind of what it is, what it's doing, and, and what's happening. And so uh, the bulk of the series, of course, is going to be for subscribers only. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cover some of the basics, especially in this video part one, just a very, very basic about TempDB. And one of the misconceptions that I see a lot is it's growing quickly or it's getting bigger or it's, oh my gosh, how do I stop this? Well, you may or may not want to stop that, um, the growth, if you would. And, but the other thing, or the I should say the more important thing is you want to understand why it's growing, not how do I stop it? Because depending on your processes, it actually may should be growing. In other words, it actually, that's what it should be doing. If, if you're going to run a query, and in, in this individual's case, they were populating a temp table with everything. And I know that the debate between variable tables and temp tables and global temp tables, it's a really cool thing, right? I mean, it kind of makes us feel productive even though we're really debating the minutia. But the thing is, is that that's going to have an impact on your um, on your your temp db and so i'm going to give you kind of a very very simple example in sql server if i were to create the global variable table temp table and i were to insert into this table values one and i were to of course select star from this temp table this operation here has an impact on temp db okay that's what we mean by temp table right this is this is this is impacting temp db and in this individual's case they had they were populating data into a temporary table and then they were performing a query on that temporary table and then of course they were dropping the temporary table and i kind of asked this individual i was like why are you even using the temporary table like you're not isolating data from the source to the temporary table to the select query to the then dropping the temp table and I look, I know it's fun to populate temp tables, right? I mean, probably it, it just feels cool to, to populate a temp table with data. But if you're not isolating data from the source, let's say I have uh, a table called inflation, and I just select or I insert into my temp table everything that's in the table inflation, then I select star from my temp table, and then I drop my temp table. Wait, wait, wait. Why am I just inserting a bunch of data into the temp table and I'm not isolating anything, right? So, and in, in even then, we should, be, we should be careful, right? So, for instance, let's suppose that I was just inserting um, inflation data into my temp table from, as a case in point, um, inserting inflation data from my temp table where it's only this year. Is it really necessary to create a temp table to insert data into the temp table and select star from the temp table and then drop the temp table? Again, I understand it feels productive, right? I understand it feels cool to do, it feels nice, and oh wow, I can use this new tool, but is that tool necessary, right? If I just need the inflation data of this year, why don't I just select star from my current table, the existing table that is, and in my query make it sargable where it's only pulling inflation data of this year? There's no reason to populate an entire different data set, create more data on the fly, right? I, and I understand that using all these tools can be cool, but in this developer's case, that was what was going on was the temp table that was created in this case right here is uh, one second um, was unnecessary. And I'll I'll kind of show that in this example, we can see I've created a temp table, I've inserted a value into a temp table, and I get back one as an ID. Suppose that I that's all I was trying to accomplish. Well, there's other ways of doing that. I could do it this way, right? So the question really comes down to is the, is the temp table um, or is the process that you're doing, first of all, the first question is, is the data as isolated as it needs to be when we do any process whatsoever? So we're going to go over in this series, the next video, we're going to deal with debugging or finding potential issues here. But one of the things I want to start with always is in our queries, we always want to make sure we're applying every filter that we need to do. 
we never want to return more data than we need. Okay, if we need more data, then we need to return more data, but we never need to return, we never want to return more data than we need. So what is it that we need? Let's only return that small subset of those data. And when we start there in the series, then we can start to look at how to debug things, how to look through to find problems and say, oh, right here. There are very few situations, not none, but there are very few situations in which select star is ever an appropriate query. Again, I want to point out that's not to say there's never an appropriate situation, but select star more often than not is an inappropriate query. There are times it is very appropriate, but if you ever see a select star that you want to definitely look at that and if there's a select star and there's no where clause like if it's just select star from table that's that's also very suspicious so the first thing to note is are your data as isolated as possible and then maybe the process that you're using should be using tempdb in which case it's not growing out of control and you need to stop it but now we need to start looking at how we're using tempdb isolating the data down and proceeding from there and that's what we're going to take from the next part of the series.